you know, I want to jump into something uh, real quick, something that we, we've had uh, talked about many, many times on the show in the last few months. Uh, that mm-hmm. being the big release of the Shawn Michaels Bret Hart DVD. Uh, for all you guys that do not did not know, it came out on Tuesday. If you did not listen to Monday show, you did not you might not have known that. But uh, uh, of course, uh, we we covered it a little bit on Monday. But we're going to dig into it. Uh, but I want to ask you, Ty, have you had the chance to see the video? Did you pick it up? No, not yet. But I'm going to as soon as, I, as, soon as I'm able. All right, let me get let me dig into it real fast, and, and I want to get your opinion, and you can comment on your thoughts. Now you don't you don't sound too enthused about it, man. Uh, no, I'm not actually. Um, believe it or not, I. I went on to uh, Twitter uh, yesterday and made a few comments regarding this DVD. Um, I picked it up Tuesday, a uh, highly anticipated DVD, um, not only for myself, but for obviously for millions around the world. Uh, yeah. it's big Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart fans, this is the this is the DVD we've all been waiting for. With bated breath, we've all been excited for this, uh, this DVD. So I went out yeah. and picked it up, $25, Blu-ray, came home, popped it in. Started watching it, and this is uh, narrated by uh, Jim Ross, or uh, he actually was like more of the mediator, I would say. Uh, uh-huh. on the DVD. Uh, of course, this is a one studio deal. Sean and Brett side by side uh, in this uh, in this one studio, and they're going over their history of uh, their matches and their career uh, with each other uh, from the days of the Rockers all the way to the uh, uh, the infamous uh, screw job in Montreal. Now, I'm going to tell you guys. Honestly, from a wrestling fan's perspective, and I like to find myself, I like to call myself a historian. Uh, somebody mm-hmm. that, I, I buy all these DVDs. I'm not going to lie. I'm a big wrestling mark. Call me a fan. Call me a mark. Call me what you will. Um, but being a consumer and buying this product, I was disappointed. Um, really? Yeah, I was. I really was. I, I watched it all the way through again today, uh, and I'm probably going to watch it one more time to make sure that, uh, you know, I'm going to give my final thoughts uh, on Monday show. Uh Exactly, because sometimes you got to watch something twice. Sometimes you got to watch it three times to really appreciate it. The yeah, one it's like thing, a song. <laughs> it's like know, a song. you got to listen to it a couple times. Exactly, exactly. Here's the thing I liked about it, though. I love the fact that they put matches on there that many people did not see. They had a lot of Coliseum video exclusives. They had the very first ladder match that uh, WWE ever had, which was between Brett and Sean. They had a match with the Rockers and the Hart Foundation uh, at the Tokyo Dome, which they did in 1991, which was a, a really good fucking match. For anybody that Hard has not Tokyo. seen that, yeah, dude, good match, dude, real good I've match. Been, I, I've been there, man. That place is huge. Oh, my God. That stadium has an aura about it. It's 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 weird. I'm not really big into Japanese wrestling. I have, you know, I've watched my fair share, I'd say, but um, yeah. that stadium, oh. that, that building is just an amazing building. Oh, wait a minute, wait. I may have it confused with the Egg Dome, but did they, reta- did they rename it? Um, I was in the Egg Dome. I was in the Egg Dome. That's where I was at. You no, know, I don't know if they renamed it. I always thought it was the Tokyo Dome, but uh. Oh, okay, because okay, I was in the, I was at the Egg Dome. Because all those all those buildings over there uh, always seem between you know they all seem to have some sort of like uh, mystique about them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the yeah, Tokyo Dome, is, the Tokyo Dome is is one of those uh, stadiums. that's very distinct. It's much like I compare it a lot to the Pontiac Silverdome uh, where WrestleMania three was held. It has its mm-hmm. own. Um, it takes its own persona, I guess, for a lack of better words. Yeah, yes, and I, I compare the Egg Dome to Madison Square Garden. Exactly, it it, yeah. it, it is. It's another perfect example. Another yeah. uh, very good example. It, it's it's the Madison Square Garden of Tokyo of Japan. Yes. Yeah. So, on the match content, I mean, you can't go wrong. I haven't really got a chance to dig into the second DVD, but I'm actually, if you if you pardon me for one second, I'm gonna slide across my my little. Uh, cubicle here where I'm doing the show and grab the DVD cover. So hang on one second. I want to make sure I'm right. Okay. One thing I'm going to say, WWE, get back to packaging your DVDs with inserts. They used to give you an insert telling you all the match-by-match uh, things that are on these DVDs. They don't give you that anymore. Uh. But uh, it's a nine-hour DVD. Bottom line is, listen, guys, here, here's my thing. Match quality, premium. Can't argue with it. Can't dispute it. They have all the matches that you want to see. Everything from the screw job Montreal all the way back to Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart's very first match that they ever had with each other when Shawn was still part of the Rockers. And this was a singles match. Great stuff. I, I liked it a lot. I, and again, I haven't dug through all the matches just yet. I haven't been able to sink my teeth into those just yet. But the documentary kind of disappointed me. And I'm going to explain to you guys why. I really wanted to see a 
more emotional side of these two. Uh, we did get emotion, don't get me wrong, but we didn't get what what I think most fans in, are anticipating out of these guys. I don't. I know you, I anticipated a lot more. It, it seemed you know, I like think what, what, I think what you anticipated was anger. Well, yeah, a, a little more. <laughs> <anger, a> li- <laughs> I didn't mean I didn't want to, I didn't want them to beat the shit out of each other to appease me or anything like that, but. It just seemed like when you guys watch this DVD, DVD, you guys tell me. Get back on Twitter, Facebook. Let me know. Give me your feedback. Matter of fact, I'm going to post it in the PWE, uh, PWE 24/7 on Facebook, and, and get your guys' opinion. Anybody that's seen it. But but Ty, ch- when you check it out, tweet me and let me know what you think. But to me, Brett came off the aggressor, the aggressor in this thing mm-hmm. uh, for a, for a vast majority of the DVD, meaning that every time he talked about something. He was kind of harsh on Sean, and then he would kind of, you know, dig on Sean a little bit, but then he would dig on himself a little bit and kind of take a little bit of responsibility. Sean kind of just sat back and, and just uh, had that, uh, uh, well, you know, I'm not going to dispute too much, and, and he really didn't counter too much of Brett's, what Brett had to say, but Brett countered a lot more of what Sean was saying. Right. And, and there was parts in the DVD where Jim Ross actually himself called out Brett Hart a few times on some things that he had said, like, he had made fun of uh, of Sean coming to the ring and doing the strip tease dance in the ring and, mm-hmm. with the with the kids and then putting the glasses on them and dancing and and Jim Ross countered that with well you come to the ring and put glasses on people's heads and then Brett said oh well it's different I'm not doing a strip tease the only yeah. and that was the only time that Shawn Michaels had something where I felt like he kind of defended himself he looked at Brett and said I didn't see anybody taking their clothes off so where was this strip tease you're talking about. 